Hello and welcome to this Channel Asia Brand Voice, how partners can service new customer demand in association with Juniper Networks. My name is James Henderson, Editorial Director of Channel Asia based in Singapore, and I'll be your host today as we highlight changing customer investment priorities specific to technology and services, also how partners can evolve to add incremental customer value, and crucially as well, the role of Juniper Networks in helping partners capitalize on increased services demand. To do that, I'm delighted to welcome Greg Yoda, Vice President of Customer Success and Support across Asia Pacific at Juniper Networks. Welcome, Greg. How are you? Thanks, James. Um, So far, so good. Appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Good stuff. Thank you very much for joining us today, Greg. We really appreciate it. Now, we'll start with an assessment around the customer investment priorities. As you know, Asia Pacific, very dynamic market. It's changing a lot. Add in the post-COVID elements as well. Hybrid work becoming the norm. How are you seeing customer technology investments evolve in the current environment? And given the context of services, how is that impacting expectations? APAC is extremely dynamic under normal circumstances. It's one of the reasons it's the, it's absolutely my favorite part of the world. Uh, no two days you wake up with the, with the same challenge. Japan does things different than India. You know, it's just, it's, it's a fantastically challenging place to be. Um, if you take that, that normal diversity and the challenges associated with it, and then you overlay what we've gone through the past two years with COVID. And again, each country, each culture dealt with COVID differently. And and then on top of that, the next wave was the supply chain challenges that we ended up having to deal with. And now we're sort of in the, 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 what I'll call the unwinding phase, where COVID is more or less behind us, we hope, in most places. Um, The supply chain issues are starting to resolve themselves, and, and we're figuring out what's the new normal going to be. From a purchasing perspective, over the last three years, they've had to make massive changes quickly on the one hand, to adjust for the changes imposed by COVID, right? And then when the supply chain um, delays hit us, all of a sudden they had to look further ahead than they've ever had to look before just to anticipate and get a spot in the, in the supply chain. Now, thankfully, um, those issues are, are, are resolving themselves. But what has resulted is an absolute requirement for an increased flexibility and agility in, in how customers are purchasing, how and, and not only technology, we're here to talk about technology, yeah. but how they're doing purchasing. Just like every country did things differently during COVID, right? They're all responding to that slightly differently. But the one thing that we see that's consistent, it's absolutely consistent across the region, is an increased reliance on automation, um, intelligence in the network, and, and what we refer to as experience-based networking. Um, how are the networks that they're building um, interacting with, with their customers? Um, those, that, that commonality that we're seeing is great because you know, Juniper has products and services to address that, that increasing need. We have Mist AI, which is in the Gartner top quadrant. We have Paragon, uh, which provides uh, automation capabilities. From a support perspective, uh, we have JSI or Juniper Support Insights. Um, and those are just a few of the offerings that Juniper as a company has. Services has to have a foot in both worlds. Uh, we, we have to be able to maintain the, um, the networks that exist today, some of which have been in place for quite some time. Um, we have to be, again, flexible in working with the customers and their project schedules, um, you know, dealing with supply chain pull, pushes and pulls. Um, and we also have to be helping them with this new technology that they're not very familiar with. So we're really trying to maintain a balance in providing that support that's needed today, helping customers figure out from a design point of view where they need to be in the future, and then positioning ourselves to help them build it. So Greg, you know, but, and you hit the nail on the head, right? It's a diverse market anyway. And then you throw in cover, then you throw in supply chain, then you throw in changing demands of the customer. And you mentioned flexibility, agility there, and obviously the intelligence and the automation. How is all of this perfect storm that's coming together, which is, you know, creating a lot of opportunities for your partner ecosystem? What does it actually mean for your channel? I mean, how are they going to remain relevant as well and, and actually react? Because relevance is a word that we hear a lot. 
But in the context of today, what's the role of partners in that? A couple of things there. Uh, Juniper is an extraordinarily um, partner-centric company in this part of the world. Um, I don't know, something in the neighborhood of 90% of what we sell and support goes through partners. So they are, they are super critical to, to our success. And you used, you used the word opportunity, and there's a ton of opportunity there. But at the same time, um, the partners um, have a challenge, right? They, they have the challenge to uh, be flexible and adapt to what the customer is, is going through, j- just like we talked about uh, before. So they, it, it's from their perspective, developing new skills, yeah. right? Um, to, to address what's going on. It's, 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 it's no longer about um, routing, switching and security. That's, that's kind of table stakes these days. Yeah. Um, it's, we're pivoting more and more and more into software and application skills. And because we're so partner centric, um, it's just super important for us that, that our partners um, build and maintain those skills um, just, as, just as Juniper uh, is building and maintaining those skills. Um, you know, in terms of how this is gonna impact them, uh, the partners have today more, more tools available, uh, more tools and capability at their disposal um, to have visibility into uh, not only problems with the network, but how the network is, is performing. And that's something that, that they didn't have in the past. It was a much more manual exercise, uh, more of a break-fix mentality. Uh, just in, in the not too distant past, but they they now have more tools um, that they can use to help their customers. And 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 as, as we as we adapt to the challenges, there's a massive amount of opportunity out there for our partners. And, and Greg, you you touched on there the the change in the ecosystem, and but but also it comes with that caveat and a, and a positive caveat that support the tools and, and the systems are improving as well. As a vendor. As a channel-centric vendor, how are you helping partners through this journey? Because as you mentioned, the customers are changing by definition and the partners are changing. As a vendor, how are you helping your ecosystem capitalize? Three parallel approaches, uh, if you will. Uh, We have a completely revamped um, partner ecosystem organization within within Juniper. Uh, We have almost doubled the number of uh, partner facing um, services partner managers that that partners can reach out to uh, and ask questions to raise raise issues with so so structurally we 've got more capability and capacity than we have in well since i 've been at juniper so it's it 's been been ten years um, so so we have more internal investment um, the second aspect is really enablement. Yeah. Um, we just talked about the challenge of developing new skills that, that partners have to satisfy the, the changing customer environment. Um, we don't expect them to develop those skills on their own, right? So we're putting a, a lot of time, effort, and money into improving how we can enable partners. Um, we've got new tools. We've got new training, new certification programs. Um, we provide funding. Um, if they need help in, in building those skills. Um, and and if we, we, we believe that if we can uh, support the partners by improving their enablement and their capability, um, the partner's better off, the customer's better off, and Juniper is better off. And then the fine, final thing um, related to that is it's, it's not just about automation for the customer. Uh, Juniper is putting, um, putting an awful lot of, of focus on becoming easier to do business with. Um, you know, our, our partners have enough to do taking care of, of the customers. Uh, we don't want them to spend a lot of time having to figure out who they have to go to in Juniper or, or what system or tool or, or login they have to use. So we're automating our interfaces. Um, we're, we're automating the processes that we have. We're really making an effort at making Juniper an easy uh, vendor to do business with for the partners. 
And I think that is a very key point. You know, you, you're making the internal investments and in that simplification for the channel, but then you're also supporting them with the enablement. What are some? What have been some of the benefits so far? And I know that's always a work in progress, right? And the, the progress continues. But are you seeing the benefits for partners already play out across the market? Yeah, absolutely. The short answer is yes. But the longer the longer answer is the more the more we can do to provide partners the ability to address the entire spectrum of the network planning cycle, whether it's architecture, uh, detailed design, implementation. Uh, network monitoring or performance management, the more we can do to enable them um, to address that entire spectrum, overlay on top of that the, the automation that we talked about with the, with the new tools, um, the, the, uh, the artificial intelligence capability that we have, that, that allows them to create more stickiness mm -hmm. with the customer. And along with that stickiness that you just, you know, you get a better recurring revenue stream. Um, the more software you put in there, the better your margins are. Um, so it's 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 again we're we're trying to put the partners in a place where they're more relevant across the entire spectrum of what the customer is looking for. And if we can do that, we'll make them successful um, technically and financially. And, and Greg, just to, to leave us on, on a final point, I mean, you mentioned their state of the market, obviously a lot of factors in, in APAC as a region, uh, as you articulated, but the services demand accelerating, the relevance for partners heightening, and you supporting as well as a vendor. What's your final piece of guidance or, or advice for partners looking to capitalize on this new customer demand for services? Things are changing so quickly across the, the entire ecosystem. There's, there's a couple of things that, that I would suggest, right? Uh, and this is specific for Juniper. Um, our portfolio changes really quickly. We have, we have new offerings today that we didn't have a week ago, right? And if you, so, so make sure that uh, you're, you're regularly taking a look, talking with your services sales uh, resource, your services partner manager, and, and make sure that, that you know everything that we can do to help you, right? Whether it's partner program, training, uh, portfolios that we have to support you with the customer, just make sure that, uh, that, you're, that you're current and up to date on that. Um, the second thing is know that we have your back. Uh, we understand how challenging it is. Um, you know, we are still unwinding from COVID, we're still unwinding from, uh, from the supply chain issues. Um, we have a seven by 24 operation. Um, if a customer has a problem, has a question, we have the ability to help. Um, and you should, you should, the partners should go into those customer engagements knowing that they have Juniper's full support. Um, and then finally, and this is, this is going to be, this is going to be a bit of a, of a shameless plug. We're going to, we're going to be starting the services advisory councils again. Uh, now that we can begin to travel in person. Um, it's, my, it's my favorite activity of the year where we get to hear from the partners firsthand um, what's going right, what's going you know, wrong, where we, where we need to improve things. Um, I really hope that I can see everybody uh, over the next couple of months um, because it's, it's all well and good for us to believe we're doing the right thing. But until I hear that back from the partners, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Love the feedback. A great way to finish there, Greg. Well, thank you so much for your time today, taking us through the market opportunity and obviously the role of partners in that and how Juniper is supporting. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, James. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching this Channel Asia brand voice, how partners can service new customer demand in association with Juniper Networks. Thank you all.